of two students, Maxim Kulan Drums and Chase Collins. All right. And um, it's going to be highly interactive. You can ask us questions anytime you want, but um, both Alonzo and I use technology. We tend to use technology in our ensemble classes quite a bit. And when we say technology, we tend to use a lot of like sequencers, um, DAW, digital audio workstations, um, such as Pro Tools. We're running Logic today. Um, but we try to incorporate backing tracks and different click tracks for the band to play along with. If we're missing some in instrumentation, we tend to make that up with sequencing behind the tracks and we fill out the rest of the band and everything. And also today there are no background vocalists, so we also recorded background vocals to incorporate with the tracks and to play with the band and everything as well. So um, we're gonna play a few songs for you. We'll talk in between. Feel free to ask any questions if you have them. And that's it, all right. Production of the the records or the tunes that uh, in current like current radio top forty or whatever like uh, uh, some artists uh, we do a lot of R and B or hip I do a hip hop R and B ensemble during the spring and a lot of the tunes that we we do are produced in such a way with such saturation and and uh, layers and layers of sounds 
which we just can't produce with the piano, bass, and drums and guitar. Uh, depending on the combination of the class, uh, for the ensemble teachers in the room, you know, sometimes you have, uh, if it's not by audition ensemble, you get what you can take. Sometimes you have a class without a bass player. Or you have a vocal group with two vocalists, and uh, you might want to do some tunes with background vocals, <coughs> with which uh, Chantel already mentioned we had backgrounds on the, on the track. Uh, how we basically went about doing this is take basically you would do it like you would do any other arrangement for any tune. You would arrange, you would take the original tunes, arrange them accordingly, um, like with the intro and the outro. This song is a wake up. Uh, it's originally done by Teddy Pendergrass and it was redone a couple of years ago by uh, The Roots and John Legend. So we gleaned from that and developed a new arrangement um, from that and put some cool vocal stuff in it. I don't know if you heard it. Of course, like she said, we were on levels because what we were doing is uh, we have a multi-output uh, uh, interface um, to where we have different things coming out of different channels on the board. So we send it to the board. So we have a track coming out of one thing, vocal coming out of another thing. So it's, it's a kind of a, a high-tech operation that you would find in, uh, like you go see uh, Justin Timberlake at the garden. Just, just fun. Yeah, when they just real and hunt up, what's the argument for? Um, it's it sounds amazing. What is the argument for creating these sorts of um, uh, experiences in the classroom as opposed to uh, encourage students just, you know, since we only have a few instruments, let's strip it down and find a musicality in just a little bit that we have. Well, I'm again, sure it's, not, it's, not, it's not an opposition to the traditional method, uh -huh. you know. Of course, if we're doing a jazz trio, and if I'm playing a jazz trio, I want it to feel like a jazz trio. I'm not going to probably do this for a jazz trio. I, when I mentioned, when I specifically mentioned those styles, uh, that was for a reason of that it's not an opposition to. It's not like you know coming in trying to throw, you know, rage against the machine. Oh, throw away the pianos! You know, I'm not using the piano today because I felt like keyboard was, was more appropriate for this situation. Mm -hmm. But I like playing the piano. I'm a pianist, <laughs> so I mean, I could I could play piano, but. A lot of times with the students that are coming in and what they are leaving to go do right. is something that they aren't you know, all the time prepared for. There are, a couple, there are a few students that were here and then they took ensembles and they left and they started you know, working with like Adam Blackstone and you know, Rob, like the Rob Lewis's and so forth, you know, Christine Thagonaras and the Justin Timberlake's and those kind of situations uh, would, would, would lead me to think that we should be uh, preparing them somewhat oh, for true. that as well. So this is preparing for the <coughs> actual real world. Right, right, right. And giving them the exposure to it as well, because yeah. a lot of students don't have yeah. that exposure. Like and a lot of them may not want to do that. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's not shoving it down and throwing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this mm -hmm. or else, but it's, you know. Mm -hmm. The majority, I know for myself specifically, the majority classes I teach are pop, R&B right. ensembles, and so, and pop rock and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll fuse both of it. Like I might have the keyboardist just try a song with a patch and just, you know, or my, you know, like they might play piano on the rest of the songs, but mm -hmm. just for one song to give it a certain effect, I might have them try it just so, so they can get experience in that. They might do not do the full out backing track and everything because they might not be ready for that, right. but just to give them that taste. Um, so yeah, exactly. And they look forward to it. They're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. So that's, yeah. Well, I have a couple questions. One is, how long did it take to make that track? And can we hear a little bit of the track without the band just to hear what's on it? Sure. And then we know what you're kind and of And I, I want to explain what we call them, these tracks. We call them stems. <laughs> All, we call them stem tracks uh, or backing tracks because it doesn't have some of the elements that we're playing. So we're playing to stems or skeletons. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. playing on top of it. We're playing on top of it. So if you could play that, um, there, was, there was a count off because, again, in a larger city, in a big, in a more ideal situation, we would have a click track on a separate out. We would have like ten outs going to the board, each background on a different thing. And but we condensed it down. I, I bounced them down to stereo pairs. I have like the full track on a stereo and the backgrounds on another stereo, just to make it run a little smoothly because of the small room setup. But I, I could. There are ways to run tracks like you would in a studio. Yeah. Like 30 tracks, 48 tracks if you needed to. So they all, um, they all can be se um, se separately mixed, right? Yeah, right. separately coming from either because you would run it through uh, 
I made you change some audio interfaces and have um, how many ever outs you need. With it. So we got the count out there. track, uh, well, he worked on some of it, wherever he worked on it, I don't even know where he worked on it. He worked on some of it, <laughs> at his room with his house with his laptop, I worked on it with my laptop, and then I brought it in. Uh, I gave it to her, she took it, but well, actually I emailed it to her. So that's how we worked it, it was like utilizing everything, email, transfer, we transfer.com, Put it in the put it in the folder. Send it. Okay, I'm gonna put vocals, and then I'm gonna put it on the drive. And when I get it back yeah. to the so, so the what track. we're hearing, we're hearing obviously the vocals. And what else is in there? So you, you uh, there's a keyboard patch. There, there's a keyboard. There are a couple of keyboard synth patches. Okay. Um, strings. There's strings. A uh, because a lot of times, if you're the only keyboard player, it's hard to play every part at one time. You want to keep the bass. Uh, you know, maybe what we call mains. I want to. I'm, I'm. I consider myself a main keyboard player, so I play mains live. Yeah, I can play auxes if I need to, auxiliary keyboards. But being a main player, I like to put auxes on the track.